Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 10th OAuth tutorial. And in this video, we're going to create a database using MLab to store our users in for our application. All right then, so I know you're probably sick of these diagrams by now, but I just want to say where we're up to. We're up to round about here where we're firing the passport callback function. So at this point right here, if you remember what we need to do next is decide whether this user has been to our application before or if they've not been to our application before because if they've not we want to create our own record for them in our own database if they have been to our application before we want to just retrieve their record from our own database right so this is the point that we're in now so we can do all of this kind of check um, inside this callback function because this is what fires when the profile comes back to us right so we can take this profile information and we can say get the Google ID and then we can look in our database to see if there's a user with that Google ID. And if there is, we can retrieve it. If there's not, we can create that profile or that record in our database. Does that make sense? Cool. So before we do anything, we first of all need to create a database. I'm going to be using MongoDB and I'm also going to be using an online service called MLab. So we can create our database online instead of locally on our machine. And I'm doing that just to speed things up because this is not a Mongo tutorial. This is an authentication tutorial and MongoDB is just a small part of this. So I'm gonna use this online service called mlab.com, which is gonna allow us to create a database online and then sync up to that database in our application. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is either sign up for a free account or log in if you've already got one, I'm gonna log in. And you can see right here, we have no deployments or anything like that. I'm going to create a new one. So this is going to create a new database for us. And you can choose your provider. I'm just going to stick with Amazon Web Services. And I'm going to go for a sandbox plan type, which is absolutely free. Uh, we can select a location, um, but we need to continue first of all. And then select the location. I'm going to choose Europe because that's nearer to where I am. Then we can continue. Database name, I'm going to say NN for NetNinja OAuth test and then continue. You can see the database name is populated right there. So continue with that. And yep, I just want to confirm everything. Submit order, even though I'm not paying a thing. And this is going to spin up my database for me. OK, so now we have this database and it's in progress. You can see thanks for your patience, blah, 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 blah. But if we click into this, we're going to notice a little key at the top, this thing right here, right? This is what we need to use to connect to MongoDB, right? This is the connection string. Now it's asking for a database user and a database password. And currently we don't have any users for this database. And don't get this confused with the user you used to log into the whole MLab account. This is a database user that we need for this, right? Not your account username. So we need to create a new user for this database. So I'm going to click on add database user and I'm just going to call this net ninja if I can spell it. Is that right? Yep. OK. And then just give it a password and another one. In fact, let's just make this easier for myself. I'm just going to call it test. OK, and then we can create this username and password for this database. So now we have this user associated with it, we can import that user and the password right here. So I'm going to copy this string and I'm going to go back to my editor over here and I'm going to add this into the keys file because again, this is not something you just want anyone to see because your username and password are going to be inside this string as well. So I'm going to pop this into my keys file and underneath Google, I'm going to create another property and this time it's going to be called MongoDB. Okay, and then I can add in an object right here, and it's going to be the DB URI. And I'm going to paste this string in, and I need to add in my username, which is NetNinja, and also the password, which is so original test, and that's fine. So now we have this key stored inside this file right here. So we can use it to connect to MongoDB. Now we're going to be using Mongoose to connect to the database, which is 
an ORM, it just makes it really simple for us to communicate with MongoDB. It adds a load of different methods that we can use to query the database, that kind of thing. All right. And by the way, if at any point you feel like you're being left behind when it comes to MongoDB, I do have a full series on MongoDB, which takes you right from beginner, having never used it before, through to a fairly advanced level. So I'll leave the link to that down below if you want to check that out. So now we have our MongoDB URI. We can use this to connect to the database and we're going to do that in app.js. Now, like I said, we're going to use Mongoose, which is a package for Node to do that. So we'll need to install that first of all. So I'm going to come over here and exit out of this process. And then we're going to install Mongoose by saying npm install Mongoose. And that's just going to take a few seconds to do. All right, cool. So when that's installed, we can go back to the code in app.js where we want to connect to MongoDB. So we need to import a couple of things here. First of all, const mongoose. We're going to import that, which we just installed. So that's require and then a mongoose, not mongoose, mongoose. All right. So we can use that now in this file. We also need to import the keys file because we're using this thing right here, MongoDB DB URI. So we need access to this. So let's import also that keys file. We'll say const keys. It's going to be equal to require again. And inside this time, we need to say dot forward slash in the config folder forward slash keys. All right. So now we have access to that keys object as well. So then let us connect now to MongoDB. So little comment to say connect to MongoDB. Just like to do this so everything's organized and I know what everything is. And then I'm going to say mongoose, which we just installed right here and required mongoose.connect. And we're going to pass through the connection string right here. So instead of passing it directly in here, then potentially committing this to Git and uploading it to GitHub where everyone can see it. What we're instead going to do is pass it in using the keys object. And then it's dot mongo DB, I think. Yep. Dot mongo DB dot DB URI. So I'll say dot db uri okay so once we've done that we can pass in as a second parameter a callback function which is an es6 arrow function and inside here we're going to say something like console.log and then connected to mongodb all right so if we were to save this now and run the file by saying nodemon app then hopefully, fingers crossed, this is going to work. No errors so far. This is all fine. There's no real errors. And you can see right now, we've successfully connected to MongoDB. That's awesome. So now we're in a position where we set up a database to store our users in. And we've also connected to that database right here in app.js, which is going to fire as soon as we start up our application. So now we've synced to our database. So now we're in a position where we can take this profile and we can save it to the database that we've just created. So we'll take a look at that in the next tutorial.